Yo, Elliot, I currently own a boutique style store that sells beauty and personal care items with the option to refill products. This is what it, this is what is in front of me. However, I have a deep passion for health and fitness for a decade now, which began with me watching your videos. I also have a profession uh, and a passion for martial arts and would like to compete again. I'm unclear and unsure how to balance these things, which I want to pick something to master, but I want to pick something to master. I have multiple certifications in health and fitness, so it isn't just a fantasy. Do I just devote time to each one of these passions and see what happens or pick one and commit freely or commit fiercely? Any help on the subject would be appreciated. So let's back up for a moment. I want to get clear on what your passions are here. You have a boutique style store that sells uh, products with the option to refill. It sounds like a good business. I remember you telling me about this. It may be successful if it's what's in front of you and it is a stallion. Remember I've said, feed the stallion, starve the ponies, right? That means give more to what is giving more in your life and give less to that which gives less in your life. If this is paying your bills, it is your profession, it's your, your serving customers and it's going real well, that's a stallion. Now, regardless of your feelings about it, it's a stallion, right? You may, and remember we're talking about, we talk, spoke briefly about passion before too, and how we gotta be careful about passion. Passion ain't what it's all cracked up to be, <laughs> right? Passion can trick you. You can totally be tricked by passion. So you got to be logical, right? It's logical to keep your store going. Now, if there are other things that you want to pursue in your life, you will need to outsource and recruit some help for your store, right? I mean, that's for anything. If, you, if you're dedicated to this service and you want to start a family or you want to start a new business or you want to go traveling, whatever it is, well, you need help. That's pretty plain and simple. The way you do that is you create systems and you have people execute systems. That's really all it is. And, you, and it's, then it's a matter of finding the right people, especially today where nobody wants to work because they're getting Biden checks. So that's the first thing. If, and I'm, I'm assuming, I'm going to say that that's not a passion for you, right? It may be, and I don't know, but it is practical for you. And, some, and many times you got to take practical over passionate. You got to take practical over passionate because you, the, your life is not going to be measured about what you felt about. <laughs> your life is going to be measured about what you did, right? And that's just the way it is for men. Don't tell, let anybody tell you any differently. A man is valued by what he can do. What did you do? Not what did you say you were going to do? Not what you have passion about. What actually got done? And it seems like you're getting something done with this. It's very practical and it is good. Either you're going to uh systematize it and get some help or you're going to sell it right well, what, either way it's a stallion and it's feeding you and it's good now you say i have a passion for health and fitness for a decade now and i have a passion for martial arts and would like to compete again now having a passion for something doesn't always mean it needs to become your profession it was the case for me but it doesn't always have to be the case. In fact, nine times out of 10, it probably won't be the case because usually oftentimes what we're passionate about is not what's practical and that's okay. So my advice is keep feeding this stallion. Your passion for health and fitness is really about you. My passion for health and fitness was really about me. This is why I don't really, I don't train anybody in the gym anymore because I, I, pimped out my passion and that grows old after a time just like any hoe that you pimp <laughs> any hoe that you pimp is going to grow old at some point and you know in, in metaphorically speaking of course it grew old in me and that then that i was like i now now training myself i don't have enough time to train myself i'm training so many other people and i started to resent it this is one of the things that happens when you when you make a profession out of your passion you start to resent it and then you start to hate the thing that you love Right. And I'm just 
I'm warning you against it. That's all. That's a, that's a, that's a possibility. Not everybody is going to happen with, but it's a possibility. I saw it happen with me. And the fact is I'm genetically gifted for lifting. And so I just want to lift because I'm good at it and it's fun for me to do. But then when I started projecting that on other people and wanting them to have the same passion I had, wanting them to get the same results that I had, and I was so ignorant that I thought other people could be me, <laughs> right? I can do this. Why can't you? And I used to get frustrated. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I'm trying to make them, they say they want what I have, and I'm trying to show you to get it. I was so stupid that I didn't realize we're all different, right? I used, and, and people would hire me because they think they're going to be me. <laughs> and I used to hold myself up to that, right? So... Your passion for health and fitness does not need to be pimped out. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be. In fact, I would say that it, your business selling products that people can refill, so it means they're going to keep coming in, is probably going to be more profitable than anything you can do with fitness clients. It probably, you know, in my opinion, it probably will be because when you sell products, you're not selling your time. And so there's an unlimited amount of products you can sell, basically. Right? As long as you have the resources, you can keep selling those products, keep selling those products. When you're a personal trainer, you only got, you know, let's say you're willing to work from six in the morning to six at this 12 hours a day. Let's say you take one hour break, right? You can only really work 10, 11 hours a day. How many, at a certain point, you're cut off. So you're, it's probably a better business that you're selling personal care items, right? But go to the gym. Work out yourself, read fitness books, read health books, practice on yourself, practice on your wife, practice on your children, practice with your friends and your family. Enjoy it. Enjoy it for what it is. It's a nice hobby. Same thing with martial arts. I think the fact that you want to go and compete again is divine. That's beautiful. If you have time after you close the shop, then you go to your martial arts. I really, in fact, don't even see a big deal. I really don't even understand your question. Right. In other words, your life is OK. And I think you're trying to create a problem. I think what you're trying to do is look for look for a problem. And I know because I've been there before, too. Things are going great. Things are going smooth. And as a result, I start to think, well, I need to do something else. You know, you have no idea how many times I self-sabotage by not just by by not just feeding my stallion. And then what I do is then I go, then I'm, I'm going, I'm trying to like raise some new ponies, donkeys. Why am I going to raise these little baby donkeys? It's going to turn out to be nothing but a pain in the ass. Well, I got this big stallion. What ADHD, bro? Right? There's nothing, there's nothing to fix. There's nothing to do. Especially as it relates to your work. And here's something that, you know, I mentioned the book earlier today. He makes a lot of really good points in it. Case for patriarchy. He talks about the word vocation in that book. And we've misconstrued the term vocation in our world. And we've done it in such a way that people think that their vocation, their job is their real calling. And in our world, we personally identify with our work rather than our true vocation as men of God, husbands, and fathers. Your vocation actually comes from that sentiment. Your vocation as a man is to be a husband and to be a father. That's what God calls us to, either as a, uh, 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 how would you would say, like a, uh, you could be a, a servant of the Lord, right? Be a monk, right? These are the true vocations. You can be a monk, you can be a priest, or you can be a husband and father. Those are vocations. Selling items in the market, providing services to the market. That's a job, even if, you, even if it's your own, right? Like this, is, this is my job. I'm here with you guys. I'm speaking passionately because I'm gifted in the regard of speech. I enjoy speaking. Uh, you guys enjoy hearing me. So it's a job. I do it so that I can earn the money. But it's not my vocation. It's not my primary calling in life. I had to understand this, and that book helped me understand this even better. The primary vocation is as a man, a man of God. How are you living your life in that regard? Are you being a good husband? Are you being a good uh, father? Are you being a good servant of the Lord? That's really what our calling is. All this over-attachment to outward, worldly things, even fitness, martial arts, our jobs, they're just a means to an end, or they can be an impedance to your true end. 
there means to an end meaning that as God said to, a, to uh, Adam in the Bible, you live by the sweat of your brow. We need to start thinking in terms of the work that we do as a means to an end. And, and, and I, I listen, I'm the non-job guy. I'm the one who I promoted this idea that you should be in love with your work. But I've grown up. I've grown out of that. That was an effeminate idea, an effeminate way of thinking. Now, I still promote the book because it has all the strategies and tactics and logistics for creating something like that. So I think it's good. But the, 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 the sentiment has changed for me. A non-job is a job. It's a means to an end. And the end is buy a house, marry a woman, bear children, have grandchildren, right? That's really what life is all about. Nobody goes to their deathbed and says, oh, I wish I spent more time at the store. I wish I spent more time trading stocks. I wish I spent more time making money. Nobody says that. They say, I wish I spent more time in my real vocation with my wife. I wish I spent more time with my children, right? So I got to, I just want to kind of like clear that up for you. That not only are you trying to make a problem where there's no problem, but the problems that you're searching after will only create more problems in your life because it's more attachment to more of the things that are earthly, that are, that are, that are fleshy, as opposed to the things that are spiritual. So if you have extra time on your hand, why not pray? Why not meditate, right? Um, see your job for what it is. It's a means to an end. See your passions for what it is. It's exercising of the gifts that God has given you, right? You must have a gift and a, and a, and a, and a leaning towards health and fitness, right? Those of us who are already sort of fit and healthy, we tend to want to be more fit and healthy, right? Because God has given us the gift of fit and health. Just make no mistake about it. Fitness and health is a grace from God. Not everybody gets that. I look at, I have some family members or I look at people who grew up in the inner city and they're obese and they're sick, they're fat, and they don't even, they have, they don't even know. They're not, they're not interested in changing at all. They don't, they haven't received that gift or that grace from God. You have, because you're into it. Healthy people want to stay healthy. Doesn't mean that those people can't turn themselves around, but for them, it'll need to be a fruit. A fruit is something that you, that you have to work towards, right? Like a tree doesn't, he has to work. He has to like take time, the energy, the effort, right? And then the fruit is bare. That's fruit. Fruit in our life is something that we have to work towards. Some of us just get, to, get those fruits as gifts, right? Like I did with my fitness. So appreciate the gift, use the gift, but you don't always have to profit from the gift. You don't always have to pimp the gift, <laughs> right? And it's the same thing with martial arts. In fact, I think it would be a good idea for you to start competing again. In fact, look, I am at in my life in a very similar place to where you are in your life. My business is basically on autopilot. My business is basically on autopilot. Uh, I show up here and I serve you guys for, you know, all day on Thursday, basically, right? So I, I basically work one day of the week. The rest of the time, it's my, I, I have a team that handles basically everything. Now, I pay out of my nose for my team, but it's because I'd rather pay them well and have enough. You know, I'm not a, don't get it twisted. I'm not, I'm not rolling in the dough. <laughs> I'm not like super wealthy. I don't have millions of dollars. In fact, I'm like in the hole because I just bought this property, right? So now I'm like actually in debt. Right? I have less, I have, I'm, I'm in a hole. I don't have a lot of money, but I much rather have my time, right? And guess what I'm doing with my time, right? So the money is coming because I, I have a lot of staff and a lot of people I pay. And they make sure that the machine keeps ticking and I just show up and I do my job, right? But what do I do with that extra time now, right? Now that I'm not, I'm not totally invested in all of the aspects of my operation, like you probably aren't with yours if you have this good business. You know what I do? I actually enjoy myself training now and I don't bastardize or pimp out my workouts. Even making the YouTube videos for my Strength Camp channel, I, kind, I pulled off. I haven't done it in about, uh, I'm taking a month off. But even while I was doing it, I was like, man, I'm, I'm pimping my workouts out. I just want to be my, my fucking self. Well, I have to have this camera here all the time. And you'll even watch some of the videos from my recent series. You'll see some days I'm just like not even talking. I'm just like, I know the camera's here, but damn, I just want to be alone. Just leave me alone, right? So I get to do health and fitness for me, 
for me. I don't need to pimp it out, right? And then guess what I did also? I started competing again, just like you. I did my first strongman show like three or four weeks ago. So now that I have the time, because my business is on autopilot, it isn't, it isn't a multi-million dollar empire, nor do I care for it to be. I could dedicate more time to that, but instead, leisure, recreation. What I'm really passionate about without having to pimp it is working out in my gym, competing some straw man and hanging out, teaching and being with my family. I think you could do that too. I think, I think all that's available to you. And so anyway, that's my opinion on that. You know, I hope that was clear. I hope that kind of relates to you and your situation. Be grateful, have, have you know, gratitude for what you do have and be grateful that God has given you some gifts and enjoy those gifts, but don't feel like you have to pimp those gifts. And that's that, done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.